Hi, and welcome to The Poor Redneck. I'm your host, David E. McClendon, Sr. And today we're going to talk about some more ways to save you money. The first thing we're going to talk about, and just very briefly, is about saving money on your electric bill. One thing we have found, uh, drastic savings, is by unplugging the zip strips, those multiple outlet strips that you plug your computer and uh, other electronics into, surge protectors, um, unplugging those when you're not using the things that are plugged into it. So if you turn off your computer, unplug the zip strip. Um, if you have your television plugged in, unplug it. Um, unplug your cell phone chargers when you're not charging. All of these draw just a little bit of electricity, but it adds up. Over this uh, past week, we've done that, and we get a report from our power company, Reliant Energy, uh, every week to show, compare our uh, electric usage. And we cut our electric usage almost in half by unplugging the unused uh, appliances in our house when we're not using them. Turning off the printer, unplugging the zip strips, um, unplugging the television, the um, Roku, and that type of thing when we're not using them. And that's been a drastic savings for us. So you may want to, uh, to do that. Also, we've looked into, we haven't done it yet, but we've looked into replacing our light bulbs with the LED bulbs, which should cut our um, electric consumption drastically as well. Now the bulbs cost, some, some of them cost in the neighborhood of $14 a piece, but they last a very long time according to the, uh, all the statistics, everything we see on television or on uh, the internet tells us that they last a very long time. So replace your bulbs with the uh, LED bulbs. And what you may want to do is if you have a bulb that burns out like in a closet, rather than place, replacing that with an LED, taking a bulb that is used a lot, place it in the closet and replace that bulb with uh, your LED bulb. So like your um, kitchen lights, your bathroom lights, your uh, bedroom light, that type of thing that you use a lot, put the LED bulbs there first and then eventually replace all the bulbs. Now don't go out and replace all your incandescent bulbs just right off, wait till they burn out. Or even the CFL bulbs, which is what we use here uh, in most of our light fixtures. And that did reduce our electric consum consumption when we replaced with the CFL bulbs. But uh, those are a couple of money-saving ideas. But what we want to talk to you mostly about today is how to save money on your groceries. Now you've seen those extreme coupon shows where the people go out and they have a garage full or a basement full of all sorts of things that they've gotten free from uh, by doing the extreme couponing. And that's great, as long as you're going to actually use the stuff. Now, one of the guys is a minister, uh, and he gives the bulk of what he gets to charities, and that's wonderful. If you can uh, supply the needs of charities and at the same point in time have fun like they do, uh, extreme couponing, that's great. One of the boys was a teenage boy, and he uh, had no girlfriend, but uh, he got a bunch of feminine products uh, free. And so he's stockpiling them in his garage, like, hey, I'm going out on a date. Hey, by the way, you know, uh, if this works out, if we end up getting married or whatever, I got your, your needs taken care of. Well, that's kind of funny, but at the same point in time, if you don't need it, why stockpile it? You know, get it and give it to a, a charity that can use it. But we're not talking about extreme couponing because a lot of these people work that like a full-time job, 30, 40 hours a week um, couponing and making a reconnaissance trip to the store and uh, going through all the uh, um, different circulars and that type of thing. We're not talking about doing this extreme. We're talking about just doing it to save money on the things you actually purchase. It's not really saving money if you weren't going to buy it in the first place. And one thing you need to think about while you're at the store or while you're planning your grocery trip is generics versus coupons. Because sometimes you can have a coupon for a name brand product and still pay more for the product than you would if you were buying the generic or the store brand. So you have to decide that on a case-by-case -case basis. Take your calculator with you into the store and price things out by the ounce or by the um, pound, or by the unit, or whatever, and don't go by those tags. A lot of times in the grocery stores or Walmart, they'll have a little tag that says this much per ounce, and quite often those are wrong. Just because something's in a larger container doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's cheaper to buy it that way, so be careful of those things. And sometimes you'll have a, uh, you'll be able to find where your store has a sale on an item, 
and you have a coupon for the item and you save additional money. And this works out really great, especially in some of these stores you have these loyalty coupons or loyalty cards where you end up racking up points where you get um, coupons for like $5 off, like at the CVS. Sometimes you'll uh, buy things and you'll accumulate uh, their extra bucks, um, dollars, and you can spend this for whatever. So remember to use your loyalty cards whenever you can. Um, sometimes stores will print out coupons on their receipts that will say like $5 off your next visit. You'll see that sometimes at uh, Dollar General, $5 off if you come in on Saturday. And uh, quite often, this can be a significant savings. It's usually off of a particular size uh, um, order where you have to buy a particular amount to reach that, but quite often you're going to be doing that anyway. Um, another thing you might want to look into while you're doing this is a lot of times credit cards offer um, cash back or points back for uh, rewards dollars for purchases made in particular categories and often groceries is one of them. So check with your credit card, see which rewards cards you may have that offer that type of thing, but be careful that you're not paying more in interest because you have rewards. You have to balance that out. You can't just um, take it at face value. You dig into it, see what's my APR with this, my annual percentage rating, how much am I going to pay um, total for this and if you pay the thing off, if you buy it with your um, credit card and then you pay the credit card completely off um, at the end of the month, then you've saved, you've gotten possibly some reward points, um, but you'll have to check your rewards program. One thing you want to do is go to your different grocery stores in your area, the ones closest to your home, and talk with your meat manager. Now meat's one of those big expenses. So go and talk with the meat manager and ask him. So what day is it that you mark down, or when is it that you mark down the, the different meats? What we found when we were living back in Anderson, South Carolina, we went in and talked to the meat manager at Bilo and the produce manager, and uh, actually the bakery manager as well, and found out when, what days of the week they marked down their different products. And at that point in time, we had uh, nine people living in our household, and so, and living off of disability. So we had to economize. We had to economize drastically. Well, what we found is there are particular days in some stores where they go through and they mark down, one store would mark down the beef on one day, the pork on one day, the chicken on one day, and that type of thing. Uh, so like twice a week they mark down the beef, and twice a week they mark down the chicken, and twice a week they mark down the pork, and you just need to know what it is, and, and get there in early morning usually, because that's when they mark it down early morning, in most cases, which you have to ask before you know. Uh, ask what time of day they do that, and you'll go in, and you'll find that they'll mark down things for quick sale, and you can save drastically on that. Just the other day, we saved a dollar and a half on some bacon. Now, the bacon was still good. It was actually tasted very good. We saved a dollar and a half on a pound of bacon. Um, just because it had reached its expiration date, its sell-by date. It was still good, but it had already reached its date. Another thing you'll want to look at is the clearance shelves in stores. Many stores will have items that are reduced for quick sale, especially bakery items, that type of thing. But also scratch and dent items that, you know, the can's a little bent up. Now, you won't find that at Walmart quite often because they actually um, try to sell the stuff as long as they can. We saw a batch of peanut butter cookies on the shelf, uh, about five boxes of great value peanut butter cookie mix that uh, sat on the shelf for quite some time that were beat up. I mean, just act like they'd taken them and wadded up. So, you know, you might not find it in all stores. But look to see if you can find a clearance shelf for scratching dent dented items, items that are fixing to go out of date, that type of thing. And you will see that at Walmart sometimes with the red stickers on it that tell you that you've got a discount price on it. So look for those um, when you go to the store. But another thing you'll find, and this is really great, okay, and especially at the stores that offer free Wi-Fi, Walmart being one of them, okay, you take your smartphone, all right, and one of the beautiful things about a smartphone is you don't have to have cellular service necessarily to use your smartphone or these smartphone apps because these can communicate via Wi-Fi to do just about everything you need for them to do. So you don't have to go out and buy a, a cell phone, a smartphone. If you have a friend that's just recently upgraded, he's showing off his uh, beautiful new smartphone, say, what, do you did, what have you done with your old smartphone? Are you still using it? And when he tells you no, so can I have it? Would you, would you give it to me and, and its charger? 
you can use this for different rebate apps. You take the, uh, um, the smartphone, you'll scan the barcode, you'll scan a little QR code on your receipt, or you'll take a picture, a scan of the receipt, and you'll get rebates back for some of the products. Now, some of these are like Receipt Hog, where you get points for every receipt you take a picture of. Um, you get points for that. Some of these you just scan the QR code on the receipt. Some of them you take a whole picture of. But Ibotta, where there are certain items in the store that you can buy and get a rebate for. Uh, Saving Star is another one. And if you look, if you're um, reading the blog, we have some links in the, uh, the blog post down there to all these things. And there are times that we have a referral code. And if you will, please use our referral code because this helps us out and it helps you out. Now, how does it help you out? Because like Ibotta, you get put on the team of the person that uh, referred you. And then you have team points that you get. You can get a team bonus where if, like, you've had a certain number of people on the team of um, claimed rebates, then you get extra points and that type of thing. So you get your points rack up quicker. Uh, check out 51, Saving Star. All of these things add up. Now, some of these will pay you PayPal cash. They'll send money to your PayPal, send money to your bank account. Others will give you gift cards to your favorite store. So you might get a, and these are usually e-gift cards. Now, the e-gift cards, I've never used any except for at Walmart. Um, because that's, here in where I live, there are only two stores, H-E-B and Walmart. And, uh, of course, Dollar General and Family Dollar and CVS. But as far as other stores like Kroger or that type of thing, we don't have. So the only experience I have is with the Walmart e-gift card. And you can't use the e-gift e e card at the self-checkers. And uh, most of Walmart's uh, cashiers have no idea how to redeem them. We found what was best is to go to the uh, um, customer service, have them put the money on a regular Walmart gift card, and then you can use that at the register, at the self-checker, or wherever. And so that has worked out best for us. But do these scanning apps, um, the ones we've listed, most of them we've already used. Some of them we're just now trying. But uh, Receipt Hog is wonderful. Uh, a few of the others are wonderful. You get uh, like $10 back merely for uh, things that you're going to buy anyway. Don't, don't go buy things just because there's a rebate. Don't go buy things just because there's a coupon because that's not saving money. Okay. But how would you like to go to your grocery store and get paid for not buying anything at all. Get a rebate for not buying anything at all. Well, there are a couple of things, uh, scanning apps, where you go into the store and you scan, you'll find the different items that they have on their list uh, and you'll scan the barcodes of these items. Now, I don't know exactly what the purpose of this other than maybe to verify that these stores actually have them in stock, but you go in, um, oftentimes once a day, you'll scan, you'll get points and these points add up and sometimes they'll add up very quickly and just like with this uh, checkpoints we just got our second round of ten dollars from checkpoints and uh, that pays fairly well it's no purchase necessary there are others uh, Shopkick and a few others we just started using Shopkick so um, check into these apps uh, see if they'll work for you and again you take your smartphone in our Walmart has free Wi-Fi, other stores have free Wi-Fi, and so you don't have to have the cell data, you don't have to use any cell data for that. If you want to find some different money saving ideas, how to save money, and sometimes how to even take money out of the store where you um, get paid to take the merchandise out, there are, and you'll see these in the links as well under that topic, money saving ideas, uh, websites like Money Saving Moms, the Crazy Coupon Lady, Passion for Saving, Southern Savers, and maybe some others, where they tell you about different matching coupons with sale prices, and like a while back, um, maybe over a year ago now, there was a uh, coupon for a dollar off a bar of Zest, and Walmart was selling the Zest for you know 90 cents or something like that. And so between the two, we actually got cash back. Now, when you go to the stores like uh, some of these stores, they won't actually pay you cash back. Or if they pay you cash back, it's um, like pulling teeth to get it. So, you know, you may want to bundle this with 
another um, to where you're not just walking out with the cash, but that you're applying that additional cash towards the rest of your purchase. Uh, at Dollar General, we found where they paid us 27 cents to take out a uh, pack of fake fingernails. The fingernails were on sale for like um, 75 cents or something like that. We had a dollar off coupon. They actually paid us to take them out. And of course, our daughters are in theater and they quite often needed fake nails. So this was a great, uh, a great savings for us. Anyway, but check with these different uh, online savings ideas and you'll see uh, Money Saving Moms, The Crazy Coupon Lady, Passion for Savings, Southern Savings, and uh, they can help you match rebates, sales, um, coupons, and all of that. They'll tell you where to find the, the rebate, where to find the coupons. And speaking of coupons, there are several places online where you can go to get uh, coupons that you print out. You can choose which coupons you want to print. So you don't have to print out coupons for items you don't want or aren't going to buy. Now, if you already take your Sunday newspaper, and you're going to get a lot of times most Sunday newspapers, you'll get coupons. And so this is a great way to go through and clip the coupons to, to redeem, maybe get you a coupon file and uh, keep up with the, those. But if you're like us, we can't afford the Sunday paper, or any paper for that matter. We don't read it anyway. So we go to websites like uh, coupons.com, Smart Source, uh, Red Plum, Coupon Susie, B Frugal, a few others, and print out coupons. We go through, we find the coupons we want, print them out. Sometimes you can print out two copies of the coupons um, per computer. It keeps up with it so that you're not um, hoarding coupons or whatever. You take these to the store and you redeem them just like a regular coupon. And this helps save a great bit. Now, if you haven't, now remember we're talking about you're incredibly poor now because of the scenario in the other videos. If you haven't already applied for food stamps or what's called now SNAP, the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, you may want to do that. Now the thing about SNAP is, or these programs, is the government has no idea what it really costs to, to feed a family. Um, basically, they figure that $254 a month will feed a family of three. Now, if you have a family of three, each eating three meals a day, three meals a day for one person is 195 meals a year. Okay? Three people, three meals a day is 3,285 meals a year. Now, you take the $254 a year that uh, a family of three would receive, then multiply that by 12, that's $3,048 a year in food stamps that you get, or SNAP benefits. Okay, if you take that $3,048 a year and you divide it by the 3,285 uh, meals per year you're going to eat, that means that you have a total of 92.78 cents per meal, per person, per meal. Okay, now how are you going to eat off of uh, 92, let's say 93 cents. How are you going to eat a meal for 93 cents? 21 meals a week at this would, um, per, for one person, would be $19.49, actually just slightly less than $19.49. So I got a challenge. Obama, all of our federally elected officials, congressmen, senators, and everybody running for president I want you to take $20, and that's all you're going to spend in one week for food. You can't cheat. You, know, don't, you, you can't have somebody else buy you food. Uh, this is t for everything. If you're going to drink a soft drink, it's got to come out of here. You're going to drink a cup of coffee, got to come out of here. Um, you're going to eat you a uh, four-course dinner, five-course dinner, or whatever, got to come out of here. $20, that's everything for a whole week. 21 meals has got to come out of that. $20. Now, anybody that wants to take my challenge, send me an email. I'll give you the email at the end of the, the week or at the end of this video and tell me you're an elected official and tell me that you're going to take the challenge. You're running for president. You're going to take the challenge. $20 for one week. Now, how are you going to do that? How are you going to actually eat off of 92 plus cents a meal? Well, here's one way. We're going to make some hot dogs. Okay. 
30 hot dog weenies. 30 hot dog weenies comes from Sugardale. It's three dollars and ninety-eight cents for thirty weenies. That's fourteen cents a weenie. Okay. Then you're gonna get you some no-name buns, enriched buns. Eighty-eight cents for a pack of eight. It's eleven cents per bun. Okay. So now you've got your weenies, your buns. Get a can of chili. Okay. This can of chili can be divided up thinly for eight hot dogs. Now this can of chili costs a dollar ninety eight cents. It's a Hormel chili. If you divide that up for eight hot dogs, that's a quarter a dog. Okay. Now you can get you some onion or man and mayonnaise or mustard or uh, ketchup. Not much, but you can get that to work out to about a quarter for whatever condiments and maybe onions you put on it. So twenty five cents a dog. That comes to about 70, 75 cents for that hot dog. So you can eat one hot dog, 75 cents, one hot dog per meal. Okay, now that's, that could tide you over and if what you're going to eat is always hot dogs. Ramen noodles. Good old ramen noodles. You probably remember them from college. Ramen noodles. About 17 cents per meal. You have to eat a lot of these in order to um, make it by. But remember, Congressman, Senators, President Obama, and those running for president, uh, Donald Trump, I challenge you, $20 a week. Ramen noodles. Good old mac and cheese. Okay. This mac and cheese will cost you, this box right here, great value brand, $0.62 cents at our local Walmart. Along with that 62 cents, you're going to have to add you a little bit of spread or margarine and uh, butter. So for right at about what it's going to cost you, what you have to spend, you can eat this. And you could probably make two meals out of that. And then good old Vienna sausage. Now, this is Armour brand. It's the more premium brand uh, in our store. 48 cents a can. You get this, a pack of rich crackers or other crackers. And you can bring it in for right at the 93 cents that you have, or 92 plus cents that you have to spend on the uh, on your meal. Pack of crackers with this. You're gonna have to divide the crackers up between several meals, but there's I think maybe maybe it's 10 weenies in here. Somehow they figured there's uh, uh, the Four sausages makes a serving. Um, so it's about eight sausages in here. Somehow they figure that this can of weenies will feed two people. And that's how you're going to do it. You're going to save money and uh, get back on your feet by budgeting out your groceries. Now you, you're not going to have to do this for long because eventually you're going to get back on your feet. Okay, congressmen, senators, President Obama, elected officials, one week, one week, $20. Take the challenge. See if you can survive off of what you expect people in the real world to survive off of for food. $20. This is actually uh, 40 some odd cents more than what you allow per week, than what you allow for your average family to eat off of. $20 should feed you for a week. I challenge you. Meet my challenge. We'll see you again next time here on uh, The Poor Redneck. We ask for your, to send us your comments to gindysvideos at gmail.com. That's G-I-N-D-Y-S-V-I-D-E-O-S at gmail.com. Let me know what you think about the $20 challenge. See if, if you want to take the $20 challenge, see if you can do it. Let me know how you fare. Let me know what money-saving ideas you come up with, and we'll post them in the uh, upcoming videos. We look to see you. We're also going to try to get you some money-saving recipes as well, and thank you.